Today's gospel reading reminds me of last Sunday's gospel reading. Last Sunday's gospel, very short, only 62 words. Today's gospel reading, just as short, only 61 words. But they're not getting shorter. Next week we make up for all of them, because next week's gospel is over 120 words. Now, today's gospel reading comes out of the 13th chapter of John, verses 31 to 35 inclusive. And out of those five verses, the absolute most important verse, not only from what I just read, but the most important verse of probably the entire New Testament, definitely the four Gospels of the New Testament, is going to be verse 34 of the 13th chapter of John. Let's take a look. Now, what I want you to notice at first, that there's the sighting, 13th chapter of John, but it says 34a, which is a reference to the very beginning of the 34th verse. So in order to really understand this verse, which is extremely important, we have to dissect it in increments. So we're going to just take a look at the very first part of the 34th verse. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment. Now commandments by the very nature are exactly what they say they are. They're things that command us to do. You have the Ten Commandments of the Old Testament that God gave to Moses up there in Mount Sinai which is also known as the Decalogue, the ten words of God to Moses and to all of us. And those ten commandments, they're not suggestions. They're not presented as nice things to do. They are commands. Jesus or God back then in the Old Testament was saying, people, these are things I command you and want you to do. There isn't a choice. Now Jesus is offering us the same thing this morning. I give you a new command, commandment. So this is something he's definitely going to want us to do. Not think about, not say yes or not say no, but as a follower of Jesus, he's going to say this is something you must do. Okay, let's take a look at another section of verse 34. And then he says, I give you a new commandment, love one another. Now, what I want you to look at is the, the commandment he gives us is a compound commandment. He's going to add a codicil right beyond the little phrase that says, love one another. You might be able to see it. It's in green. Uh, there's five little lines, five spaces right beyond love one another. Blank, 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 and the blank. That means there, up to this point, there are five missing words. Now, when Jesus says, love one another, you can say to yourself, I think I'm doing that, Jesus, I'm not sure. What instrument... What gauge, what barometer can I use to see how well I'm loving one another? Just to say love one another, uh, that seems to make sense, but how can I score my performance? I need something to compare loving one another to. So, so give me an example. How should I do that? Now, before we get to the rest of the verse 34, can anyone tell me? What are the five missing words that belong each word above one of those blank sections? Exactly right. Almost everyone's saying at the same time. Let's at the rest of verse 34. There it is. Love one another, comma. The codicil, as I have loved you. Now I understand, Jesus, what you're saying what you're telling me. Now I have something to compare my performance to. You're telling me, love one another as you have loved me. So you're my gauge. You're the person. You're the canon. You're, you're the one I'm going to measure my performance up against as I have loved you. So what I'm thinking about is this. I, I want to put that in, in a picture. What would be the best picture? And, and I want to go over to this section of pews right here. Because sometimes when I look for the answer for things, I have a tendency just to drag it from the people in that center section. So this might, how many people feel uncomfortable in walking over here? <laughs> so what I'm going to ask you is this, is I have loved you. What I'm looking for is a picture, some symbol that would best describe how Jesus loves us. Uh, what would be a great picture, a great symbol to describe just how much he loves us? The cross, you're exactly right. Many people saying in that section. The cross, there it is. How much you love me, Jesus. And Jesus said, I love you this much. And he stretched out his hand and died on a cross for our sins. Now, that's what he has done for us. But what Jesus is saying, that's what I want you to do for others. What he's saying is this. To love someone requires great sacrifice. 
It requires great pain. Parents should understand this. Now think about it, Mom and Dad. It is easy to love your son and or your daughter when everything they do, they make you proud. So your son or daughter is achieving well in school. They've never done anything wrong. You walk up to them and you say, son, daughter, I'm so proud of you. I love you so much. You always make me, me proud. Now, I'm sure they like hearing that. But don't you think there might be a little piece there in the mind saying, uh-oh, what happens if I make a boo-boo and fail to make my mom or dad proud today? Will you still love them? What happens when your son or daughter, 17, 16, 18 years old, and they have a, a weak moment when they go out one evening, and you told them not to drink and drive and not to drink, period. But they get a little carried away and they get wrapped up in a party that they're at and they have a couple drinks and a couple more. Then they get in a car and then a police officer pulls them over and then he puts them in a squad car and takes them to your house. And then they show up at your door next to the police officer. And the police officer tells you what your son or daughter did. Will you still love them? That becomes the sacrifice. Will you say to your son or daughter, come into the house and now you got a problem and actually we have a problem. Because I love you so much, this is painful, but I love you so much, I'm going to help you work through this. We will do it together. Because your love, my love for you, has not diminished. Or you're going to look at your son or daughter as the police officer brings them home and say, nope, I told you not to drink, officer. You could take him. He's yours. I don't want anything to do with it. That's what Jesus Christ is. To love someone as I have loved you, it takes sacrifice. It isn't easy all the time. You can't love someone all the time when it is convenient. Most love isn't convenient. The tension between a husband and a wife. What do most husbands want for the wives? What does a wife usually want for her husband? They typically want each other. And when there is the tension and there's the estrangement and you're getting all fired up inside because maybe your wife is working long hours or maybe the husband is working long hours and they seem to be putting work ahead of you and what you're saying and what you're screaming out and crying for is, is, is I, I need you, I want you. So I'm lashing out and I'm getting angry, but I, all my anger boils down to one thing is, is that I miss you and I want you. So the person who is claiming, I got all these things to do and all these demands of work and all the other activities of life, what they have to understand is, but my wife or my husband, they need me. I got to put all that stuff to the side. I got to make the ultimate sacrifice and be present for the person who loves me. That's what it, that's what it takes. It's dying to self. There was this little gal one night she couldn't sleep. She went to her dad and said, Dad, take me to my room and tell me a story of three little pigs. And he said, okay. So he took her to her room and he put, it on, uh, put her on his lap. And he tells this story of three little pigs. And by the time he got to the end of the story, she fell asleep. So he picks her up and pulls the covers down in bed and puts her in bed and pulls the covers up and gives a little kiss and leaves the room. Next night, she went to see her dad. He's in a computer room. And she said, Dad, tell me the story of three little pigs. Take me to my room and tell me that story. He said, okay. So he took her by the hand and went to her room and put her on his, put her on his lap. And he tells the story of three little pigs. By the time he got to the end of the story, she had fallen asleep. So he picks her up real nice and soft. And he pulls down the blankets and puts her in bed and pulls up the covers right to her neck and gives her a little kiss. And then he goes off. The next night and the next night and the next night for about the next two weeks, every night she goes to her room, her dad's office, and says, Dad, take me to my room and tell me the story of three little pigs. Initially, the dad didn't mind it. He enjoyed it. But then it became burdensome. It became inconvenient. And this one day he came up with what he thought was an incredible idea. He got a tape recorder, and he taped the story of the three little pigs. That night, his daughter comes to his office, home office, next to his computer. 
and said, Daddy, take me to our room and tell me the story of three little pigs. I can't wait. Come on. And he said, oh, honey, I, I got a really good idea. Here, here's a tape recorder. All I want you to do is go to your room and crawl in bed. And you see this little button right here? That's a play button. Just hit the play button, and you'll hear me tell you the story of the three little pigs. It's going to be the same thing. You'll get your story. Well, she didn't seem real happy, but she took the tape recorder. And she went off to her room, and his dad's got a big smile on his face because he goes back doing all this stuff he claims is so, so important, and he's got to get it done. He's thanking God for modern technology. This is working out great for me. That night, she hits the play button. The next night, she went to her dad, tell me a story of three little pigs. And he said, honey, you got your tape recorder. Go to your room and hit the rewind button, then hit the play button, and you'll hear me tell you the story. On a third night, she went to her dad and he said, Dad, please come to my room and tell me the story of three little pigs. And he said, look, you got the tape recorded. Just hit the rewind button, hit the play button. You'll hear me tell you the story. Oh, she said, Dad, no. She said, Dad, the trouble with that tape recorder is I can't sit on its lap. That's all I want to do. What did she really want from her dad? What was most important, the story of the three little pigs? Is that what she was after? That was the residual of what she actually wanted. What she wanted was to be on her dad's lap, up against the warmth of his chest, perhaps hearing the heartbeat of his heart, and feeling the wrapping of his arms around her chest and around her arms, and then falling asleep and being tucked in bed. That's what she wanted wasn't really the story of three little pigs. She wanted him. But he forgot John 30, 34. Love one another as I have loved you. It's sacrifice that Jesus Christ is saying to that father, to all of us. He should have said to himself, this takes a lot of time to do this, but she's my daughter. And there's going to come a day when she's going to act like she doesn't even know I'm alive. So I better enjoy her right now, when the most important thing in her entire world is me. Because as she gets older, that's going to change. I'll yearn for this day back. Sacrifice. To love your son or daughter when it's convenient is nice. But the challenge is to love your son or daughter when it is inconvenient when they are making mistakes, when they're making blunders, will you hang in there with them? Jesus says, that's what I'm asking. For the husband and wife in any struggling relationship, when all you want from each other is each other. And the husband makes a big blunder, the wife makes a big mistake, will you still be able to say, I forgive? To forgive requires sacrifice. It requires dying to self. It isn't easy to live verse 34, the 13th chapter of John. That's the challenge. The entire New Testament is predicated on that one commandment. And I said at the very beginning, commandments aren't suggestions. It's things that Jesus command us to do. We must. Jesus, how much do you love me? Jesus said, I love you this much. He dies on a cross for our sins. If a family member walked up to you and said, Dad, Mom, husband, wife, how much do you love me? The answer should be, son, daughter, I love you no matter what. When you make me proud, loving you becomes a whole lot easier. But when you don't make me proud, I still love you. Because it requires sacrifice. It requires dying sometimes to oneself for you going your need and the honor of the need of someone else.